So here we are! The next fighter in Smash Ultimate is going to be from ARMS, and over the last week and a half, Nintendo gave everyone a full free trial of the game so we could all check and see what the deal is with the game's entire roster. Yes, with no strings attached, ARMS was available to play for free for a full 12 days. I never picked the game up when it was released way back in 2017, but this offer was enticing enough for me to at least give the game a shot and see what it was all about. Now that the trial period is over though, a lot of people are considering buying ARMS to own forever, but are concerned that the game may not have the lasting appeal that would make it worth paying full price for, especially three years after its initial release, when there's so many great games out there you could spend your time playing. Well, after my little free trial, I'm going to discuss if ARMS is still worth going back to today, or if you're better off spending your time and money elsewhere. That's right, today I'm going to be answering the simple question of, did you miss out on ARMS? But without further ado, let's get into it. Well, if I can give ARMS credit for one thing, it's the game's sense of style. From the moment you start the game, you can feel the Nintendo-bred passion that was injected into this brand new IP. The theme music that plays when you start up the game for the first time couldn't be a more suitable indication of what you're about to experience. Holy crap, this is the biggest sporting event in the entire universe! This is bigger than Space Jam! Oh, I mean, that's what it feels like, at least. The main theme has a ton of remixes throughout the game, too, so it's a good thing they really hit the mark with this one. Because if it was anything less than spectacular, trust me when I say you'd get pretty tired of it pretty quick. ARMS has much more to offer than just some intense workout jams, though, and after opening the character select screen, you'll find every single character was designed to suit a very high standard. Each fighter has an original stylistic theme associated with only them, and easily distinguishable silhouettes, which is a must-have for a fighting game like this. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe not with Springtron, but that's kind of the whole point. This roster is one of the biggest strengths of the game, because not only does each character look completely unique, but they also each have two special abilities that make them feel completely different from each other to play. Trying to figure out which character I liked the best was some of the most fun I had with the game, gameplay and personality-wise. And in terms of the other parts of the game's presentation, the menus all look super clean, and the graphics for the stages themselves look great too. They all have the same cartoony look as the characters without going overboard, and they still feel grounded in the reality of the ARMS world. When you combine this already enticing roster with the sleek UI of the menus and these great looking arenas with booming themes, I've never been more excited to punch something from 30 feet away. Well, I suppose this is the only chance I've ever really had to punch something from 30 feet away, but that's part of what makes ARMS feel so special. Sure, it does feel like trying to fly an alien spaceship the first time you pick up the controller, but the game is so dang cool and so dang good looking you can't help but see it through, right? The general presentation of ARMS makes you want to dive into the game head first with no holds barred, regardless of the unique gameplay concept. But the question is if the game itself holds up as well as the style does. Well, let's find out. As I'm sure most of you know by now, ARMS is a game where two stretchy-armed competitors duke it out in an attempt to lower each other's health bar to zero, as is customary in most fighting games. These matches take place with an over-the-shoulder, third-person perspective, and will keep your focus locked on your opponent for the entire fight. The arenas are fully three-dimensional and allow you to move to the left and right, as well as forwards and backwards. There's a lot of stages that are built around you using various heights to your advantage as well, leaving a lot of strategy to your positioning and trying to get the higher ground. And for those of you wondering, no, I'm not even going to bother making that reference. Even though you may be used to 2D fighters, ARMS does a great job in making sure you have all the tools you need to ascend this plane of existence and become a master of your environments as an omnidimensional being. As far as the actual fighting goes, you're able to punch with your left and right arm independently of each other, and can even alter the path of your punch mid-flight by tilting the control stick. This may not make sense for a traditional boxing match, but when your opponent is so far away it takes two full seconds for your fist to reach them, you may have some adjusting to do. This is also probably a good time to mention I played mostly with the Pro Controller, as the motion controls seem to be not much more than a gimmicky wagglefest party mode type experience. Even with the Pro Controller though, the default control Controls are incredibly strange, and I had to take a few matches to find a control scheme that actually made the game playable for me. <laughs> Sorry, what's that? Custom controls weren't even in the initial release and were added three months after launch? Oh god, that would have made me quit the game right there. You also have the ability to jump, block, 
or dash, and holding down the button for any of these commands will charge your punches, giving your next hit a special property based on the type of glove you have equipped, and sometimes even allowing a character-specific special move to activate. There's also a super gauge that fills as you battle known as the Rush Gauge, and this can be consumed to unleash a flurry of punches for massive damage. The fighting style may seem a bit strange at first, but after a little while it becomes clear that the fundamentals of arms are similar to most other fighting games. You want to be able to predict what your opponent will do and pick the best option for countering their strategy. I actually found the matches to be surprisingly tactical. There's classic fighting game ingredients here, like using your grab to beat an opponent who's constantly blocking, but there's also the added strategy of best utilizing the different gloves at your disposal. When you select your character, you also get to choose three different kinds of gloves to bring with you as a loadout, with the opportunity to swap between them in between rounds. There's plenty to pick from, and they all have different levels of weight and elemental attributes that allow you to really personalize your fighting style and try to cover all your bases. You can even independently change the glove on your right and left arms, leading to metric tons of combinations to best deal with the competition. Like I said before, one of the most fun parts of playing this game for me was actually trying all the characters to see what their abilities were, and then testing them with different glove combinations to try to figure out what my favorite way to play was. Sadly though, these gloves do become a bit of a hassle. Each character starts with three different gloves, but has tons more that can be unlocked. By playing the game in pretty much any mode, you earn credits, which you then use to access the glove winning training room. And this was the lowest point of the game for me. Based on the amount of credits you pay, you get a short, medium, or long timer while you punch floating boxes to individually earn gloves for the character the box is wrapped for. This would be fine in theory, but the issue is that you have to unlock each glove for each character even if you already have that glove for someone else. Because this is entirely random, I got frustrated that I wasn't able to play a character I liked with the specific gloves I liked from someone else, unless I got extremely lucky. On top of having to get each glove for each character individually, you can actually get doubles of a glove you already have to power them up making the already hundreds of gloves to collect twice as large for almost no reason. And no, of course, these powered up gloves do not apply across all the characters that have it, only the specific character you unlocked it for will have that glove stats increased. The thought of playing the game long enough to actually unlock all of these things made me feel physically ill. And the main reason for that is there's really just not a lot to do in ARMS. So besides setting up camp in the glove store from hell, what kind of game modes does ARMS have to offer? Well, the main single player attraction is known as Grand Prix, and is the game's version of an arcade mode. This mode runs you through a gauntlet of 10 fights against other characters, both in traditional one-on-one -on -one brawls, as well as in more unconventional modes, like target breaking, basketball, and volleyball. It's about as much as you could expect from a fighting game campaign. But sadly, this is all there really is for single player modes. You could go through and beat everyone's Grand Prix on the highest difficulty if you were really looking for something to do, but I can't really see the appeal of that myself. There's no kind of bonus for doing so, and is far too repetitive to be my cup of tea. I think that having a bit more backstory and narrative for each character would have helped a lot in making me want to play each character's Grand Prix mode, but with only a few lines of text to offer about who they are and where they come from, and a picture at the end that helps tell their backstory a little bit, I guess? I can comfortably say that it's hardly worth it to play each quote-unquote story all the way through. Other than Grand Prix though, there's an online mode that lets you play in a variety of game types against a lobby of up to seven other players. And I actually really like the setup for these lobbies. Instead of each lobby playing a single match in the middle and forcing everyone else to wait their turn, the game will host multiple matches at the same time. You're constantly playing against different players and different game types, and there's close to zero downtime between rounds because there will always be someone who finishes their match around the same time as you. It keeps the wait time down and the variety up, so I can see this being a really good mode to kill time for hours on end. The downside to that is if you're going to spend that much time on this game, you're probably looking for a more competitive environment. And that is nowhere to be found in these online lobbies. There's also an offline versus mode that allows you to free play against computer players in any of these same game types that you can find in online lobbies, but I can only see this mode really getting use if you're not up to date on your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. Fighting games are always better against human players, and considering Grand Prix is all there really is to do in single player, which shows off most of these modes anyway, 
I felt I had more than enough practice against the CPUs and really did not spend any time here. Online also has a ranked mode, but it's pretty bare bones with a simple best 2 out of 3 match against an opponent of a similar skill level. If you're going to be playing a lot of arms, climbing this ladder all the way up to rank 20 is going to be your main objective, but by the time I started to play around in this mode, I was really losing the drive to keep playing. Sure, I had some fun at the beginning of my time with the game, but there's a few big reasons why ARMS started to grade on me after only a few hours of playing it. Although I can see that ARMS has a great amount of strategy and planning to be done before even entering the arena, in my short time with the game, I found the battles themselves fall flat in a couple big ways. You use your ARMS as a resource of sorts, because after you let a punch fly, you'll have your jump height reduced, as well as being unable to block until your ARM comes back. After playing for a while, I found that punching leaves you so completely open if you miss, a lot of the time it doesn't end up being worth it to throw your ARMS out at all. I found the best strategy was usually to just stay defensive and wait for my opponent to do something before dodging or blocking it and countering with my own attack while they're defenseless. Sure, I didn't spend weeks and weeks developing a strategy in this game, but after my time with it, I'm left wondering why you would ever punch or grab before your opponent. So if you match up two patient players against each other, well, you can get quite the stalemate. I'm not claiming to be an expert here, and I'm sure there's tons of competitive arms players who will tell me I'm wrong or haven't even scratched the surface of the intricacies of the combat, but after using my reactive strategies to make my way through the Grand Prix mode a few times, as well as most of my online matches, I felt like I was done with the game's main experience. This resource-based nature of the game means it ends up feeling very slow, and even with the rounds only lasting about a minute and a half each, far too much of that time is just spent waiting. Waiting for your arms to come back, waiting for your opponent to use up their rush gauge, waiting for Ribbon Girl to land on the ground so you can actually goddamn hit her! Seriously, this character is so annoying to fight! Look, I will admit, ARMS has some things going for it, and it's a lot more complex than it may seem at first glance. I wish Smash Ultimate could duplicate the simple and fast fun of these online lobbies, and the presentation of the game is right up there with the likes of Splatoon. But even with all that being said, it fails in the worst way a fighting game can. It has nothing that hooks me in as a player and makes me want to dive into its mechanics for hours on end. There's just not a whole lot here that feels actively fun. I only played this game for a limited amount of time, and if I wasn't playing it for the sake of this video, I probably would have stopped even sooner. The issues I have with the game can't easily be resolved either, because the general concept for the game inherently creates long-range, highly delayed combat. This very slow, resource-based style may be appealing to some, but to me, it wore thin pretty quickly. And to make matters worse, the issue with the combat is then compounded by the lack of modes to experience. And after you've had your fill of Grand Prix, there's not really anything else to do besides hopping into the online mode for some scrimmages. Sure, you could try to earn the arbitrary achievements to flaunt your badges, but when the game itself isn't that fun to play, it's hard to feel bothered to do so. At the end of the day, if you're considering picking up ARMS after testing it out during its free trial, I can't properly recommend this game as being worth its price tag. I played the game for free, and I still didn't enjoy it for more than a handful of hours. So I know that if I had paid full retail price for it, I would have felt quite cheated. In my mind, there's plenty of other games on the Switch at even one-fourth the price that could entertain you for ten times as long. You can hang up your gloves for good and rest easy, because Stabilize says you did not miss out on ARMS. And that, my friends, is my guarantee. There's a chance that a sequel could create a bigger and better showing of what ARMS has to offer, but until then, I wouldn't bother going back to this one. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I couldn't cover everything, but remember, this is just my opinion, and there's nothing wrong with having a civilized conversation about what we like or don't like in the comments below. If you want to take part in a more active conversation about anything in this video, feel free to join the Discord or check out my Twitch page where I'm live every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's going to do it for me, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now!